to another episode of the DVC Clubhouse, where we talk to our friends about why they chose to become DVC members. Joined with me, as always, is Jeff. Hey, everybody. And today we have Doug and Emily joining us to talk about their DVC origin story. Hey, guys. Hey. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us to share your um, your love of DVC with us. And... Um, before we we get into it just why don't you introduce yourselves to our audience let them know a little bit about yourselves well hi i'm emily and this is my husband doug uh, we live in minnesota and we've been traveling to disney together combined for several years we started both going when we were children and then when he met me he kind of joined the family so and it was my father's DVC um, that we started traveling on originally. Yeah. So I started the first time I was at Disney, I was little, I don't, the first time I was there, Epcot wasn't even built yet. And then I had gone um, uh, again after Epcot had been built and then hadn't gone really at all. In fact, since I, until I met Emily through, uh, when we started going with her family and things. And so, Emily, you said you were going on your dad's DVC. So you, your your dad was a DVC member when you were young? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my father purchased uh, Vero Beach in uh, 1998. Before that, uh, we went probably every other year, and we went on longer trips just because of his work schedule, and my mother t- was a teacher. And so we always went in June every year, and we usually went between anywhere from eight to ten nights. And so I think it just made sense um, because that's where we went. Um, That's where we enjoyed going as a family. And uh, he got a pretty good deal when he bought in. If I recall, um, he, they took off the price. We stayed at uh, Caribbean beach on that trip. So the deal that time was they took off the cost of whatever he spent on the hotel. That trip came off. That was the, came off the top of the price of the DVC. It's a little rare to hear that people, the first resort that they buy into is Vero beach. You know, usually Mm -hmm. it's like the story is somebody went to Disney, they fell in love Mm -hmm. with being at Disney world and then Mm -hmm. they buy a contract, you know, they bought a contract like boardwalk or old Key West Mm -hmm. or, you know, and so your experience then was with DVC was very much with going to Vero beach. Correct. So on that particular trip, um, we did go down to Vero beach for two nights. And so when we did do the DVC tour, it was at Vero Beach. That's where uh, we met with the first DVC guide that my parents had um, was at Vero Beach. And um, I remember um, kind of the fun tidbit about that is that I, th- I think I was 12, I don't know, between 12 and 14, I don't remember. And we, my sister and I were part of the presentation and then they had these breakfasts, these continental breakfasts in the villas um, in those beach homes. And so we went in there and they had a little trivia and I must've really been paying attention because I won. So I still have, I won a little coffee cup um, that has Mickey and Minnie sitting in beach chairs. And I still have that coffee cup in our house today. That's so awesome. (laughs) Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And so then when you and Doug met, you started going together to Disney World using your dad's DVC? Correct. Yep. So he started joining our family vacations and we went to both Vero. Um, we went a couple of times and, but mostly we stayed, went to Walt Disney World. I think we only went to Vero a couple of times. My first experience with, with Disney Vacation Club, um, I didn't even know it really existed you know, mm-hmm. until I met Emily. And, and my first experience was at Old Key West um, was the first place we went. And I'm not sure if we went to Vero on that same trip or not. Um, but I know it was um, the first time I was welcomed home um, was at Old Key West. Yay, somebody on my Old Key West team. <laughs> I, I'm i on I'm on your team. I know, I have a... 
you know, Old Key West has a it has a lot of different gets a lot of different uh, reviews for sure. But um, at least for me, anyway, you know that that first memory of, of being welcome home and stuff, and and seeing what DVC is all about in terms of fit and finish and service, and and all of those things. Uh, Old Key West holds a special place for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not you're not going to get me to hate on Old Key West. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I think there is something, you know, and I, I'm, I, I love Old Key West, so I, I, I will always say good things about it. But I think that there's something about, you know, when you go to Old Key West, especially if you're somebody who tends to like spend time at the resort and not just look at your accommodations as a place to go to sleep and go to the parks. Like if, if that's your, if that's your MO, then it's probably not the best place because there are just so many closer resorts to the parks but when you spend time at that resort you just it it feels like a vacation and not just because of like the way that it looks but the people who work there the activities that they have for the kids mm -hmm. we spent halloween there one year and it was so awesome um i had i just have like a, a ton of nostalgia from that trip because my kids were little they were dressed in their halloween costumes and, and it was just so fun and i just feel like they at Old Key West, the cast members there really, really make it make it special. And I think well, that and there is pride in the cast members there because it was the first DVC resort that they mm -hmm. kind of have like a, a certain amount of pride around that. Well, and the and the, the the beauty of Old Key West at the and and with DVC is the variety. You know, not every resort can be Grand Floridian or, or Riviera because then it wouldn't be, then it would all be the same. You know, mm -hmm. Old Key West, I would say, is kind of the kind of the gateway DVC. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more basic in terms of amenities and things, but that's okay. There's certain people that's all that they want. You know, I think of, of, of um, like Emily's family when they come along, it's fine for them because they're, they're not gourmet eaters and they're, you know, they don't need a lot of excitement. Um, for their vacation so and the room sizes can't be yeah, matched the room sizes so yeah, yeah i mean it, it you know in terms of old key west there's it gets mixed reviews but there's certainly a place for it you know even even for us that have um bounced around to almost all the mm -hmm. resorts you know we we still like to get back there once in a while it, it has a certain yeah. it fills a certain niche for sure yeah and i think amy i heard you say it once i think that's what really resonated with me is that my favorite resort is the resort I'm staying at this time. Because mm -hmm. people always say, well, which, which one's your favorite one? I'm like, I don't, I like them all for a, a different reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I miss the Riviera when I don't get to stay there for a while. Um, that one really has found a special place in our hearts. Our kids really like it there, but um, I like them all. Well, and to your point, you know, and I, I think that um, that's one thing that, I think it's lost sometimes in the DVC communities out there because it's always which restaurant, which restaurant, dining, dining, mm -hmm. where should the foodies eat? And I'm so not a foodie. Like I'm such a chicken fingers and fries guy that that is not ever top of my list when I'm thinking about where I want to stay. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe that's why old Key West does resonate with me more than some of the others is I'm there for other reasons than food. Like I'm fine eating wherever, but it's pretty rare that I'm, I'm going out of my way to, to have this, like Victorian Alberts, I would absolutely hate because I would spend all this money and probably not eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I love that, that it's, it, it doesn't always have to be about the gourmet meals. It's sometimes it's, mm -hmm. you know, the sentimentality or the, or the memories that you've made or, mm -hmm. or whatever. It, it's, it's not always about that part of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to old Key West in December and I'm staying in a two bedroom and I'm having some extended family come. And for someone who typically, at, I, I am typically somebody who's like, okay, dining, dining, dining. I'm actually really looking forward to ordering groceries. Like when we arrive that first night, having dinner in the room, it's going to be Christmas time. So I'm going to, you know, bring a tree. We're going to decorate. We're going to kind of treat it like we've just arrived at a vacation mm -hmm. home. We're going to decorate, have dinner, put on some Christmas mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Old Key West is one of those, one of like a few of resorts where you feel like you can do that and really feel like you're not in a hotel room. Even some of the other, you know, two bedrooms, that one just, the, the resort, the room, like it just feels like mm -hmm. this like relaxing, nice vibe. So, yeah. So 
Yay, Old Key West. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, at what point, I mean, for you, Emily, since your dad was a DVC member since you were a kid, mm -hmm. at what point did you know in your own life, like, I'm definitely going to become a DVC member too? I think we knew pretty early on. I It kind of evolved to where, you know, we loved going on vacations with my family, but we also wanted to go on our own vacations. And we were married for quite a few years before um, we had children. So we had quite a struggle. We did several rounds of IUI and IVF. And we were actually told that there was less than a 1% chance that um, we were going to be able to have kids. And so shortly after we had that visit with the doctor, we had a, a trip plan with my family and we went down and we had met um, with somebody from DVC. We actually went out to dinner alone one night and we were at the California Grill and we went out and watched the fireworks and they were just finishing up building Bay Lake Tower. And we kind of looked at each other and said, well, it's just going to be you and me. This is our happy place. Let's just do it. And so then the next day we went over to Saratoga Springs and we bought our first contract at Bay Lake Tower Direct. There was other plans in life because we ended up with three kids. You know, and part of that too was, you know, we'd vacation with our family and, and um, with Emily's family. Mm -hmm. And there was a point, uh, a, a, a point issue involved with what they had bought. And now we've added two more people, you know, to the trip every time. Mm -hmm. and, and so we just kind of thought it would be, you know, wise to just have our own point system that we can add to it and, and, and get not bigger rooms to, or have separate rooms, not have travel to at the same time. Tra we'll travel more, not the same time and same time, um, not have to borrow and, and bank and do all those things. So we just thought we would just add more, you know, have more to the pool. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of our, you know, when that happened, um, we had been vacationing with your parents for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I kind of started, she was, she was, uh, obviously DVC from the start and I didn't know anything about it, as I'd said. And so in the, la in the few years that, um, I'd been vacationing, that's kind of when I started getting, getting, um, seeing the value of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sitting down with our rep and, and talking, that was kind of our first, um, our first real discussion about, um, with a, with a rep about points and costs and, and, and point value versus street value and things like that. And so that's really during that conversation is really when I said that uh, this is something we need to do uh, for our families as well. Oh, that's very cool. So, so how, how many places do you own at then total? So we, um, 2009, <laughs> we bought um, into the 160 points at Bay Lake Tower. And then during the pandemic, um, we were blessed. We were still working. Um, we both work in healthcare and we were able to continue. And so the point price prices per point had went down. So we bought uh, another 110 from Saratoga um, resale. And then we're just about, uh, we have the paperwork just came in from the title company and we're, my dad just transferred his um, original Vero, Vero Beach points back to us. Um, is there at a point where they're going to probably stop traveling in the next few years? So. That's where we own. Wow. Did the Vero Beach do scare you at all? Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we love it there. Uh, we were able to go back. Uh, we, we went in there in 2009 and we purchased it. We purchased, we went, and that was a split stay between Vero Beach. That was before I even knew what a split stay actually was even called, I guess. I didn't know it was a thing. Um, we did Vero Beach and then went um, over to Saratoga. And then um, we were at Vero Beach a couple of years ago with uh, my parents and all three of the kids and my sister. So I, it still holds a special place in our hearts. And I'm just going to pay the dues and smile. The, the dues are, are tough for sure. Um, but, and we don't get there as, as often as, as, you know, we'd like to sometimes. Mm -hmm. But um, when we do go and do book, and are able to get in versus those individuals that are trying to, you know, book later that uh, yeah. realizing how hard it is to, to get into Vero, you know, we're, we're still at this point, happy to pay those, those dues just to have that ability to, yes, to get we in can there. Go when we want to go. Cause it is still a pretty sought after um, location. So um, 
We've had some good memories. Yeah, I, we, we've talked a lot about Vero Beach there. There's a lot to love about that resort for sure. Mm-hmm. I also think that in, in recent years, I've noticed it has become more difficult because I think that as social media and the DVC kind of communities online have become more present and people are joining them, people are hearing other people's experiences and want to try it. Whereas before, I think that a lot of people were like, what is this DVC resort in Florida? Why would I go there? But now people see people's pictures, hear people raving about it. And so now everybody wants to either take a trip there or at least add a couple of nights to a Disney World vacation or to a Disney cruise vacation. Um, And it's become more popular because I, you know, when I, the first time I went there, actually the first two times I went there, I was able to get the unit that I wanted both during high, highly sought after times. And now whenever I'm looking, it's definitely more hit or miss. And we would want the, a larger unit. So I think, you know, if you, you can do a studio or, and then they have the in rooms, I think if you can not really picky about which one of those you have, but I think if you want a two bedroom or even if, if you want um, those beach cottages, um, you have to have that 11 month booking window. You know, we talk about it with Vero Beach, um, there's nothing to do there. And that's kind of the point. <laughs> um, when you go there, it's, it's truly relaxing. I mean, there, uh, obviously, when you're on property, you're you're at the parks, um, sun up to sundown, and, and at least we are. At least we are. You know, five to five to nine miles a day walking. You know, and so at Vero, there's there's nothing to do, and that's that's mm-hmm. the best part. You know. So, how many of the DVC properties have you stayed at? I've stayed at every well. I have one trip where we went with, I went with just the girls. We did a girls trip over the 50th. So the September 30th, I think we were there just for the weekend. Um, and we stayed at Copper Creek. So I don't think he's, you've not no. stayed at Copper Creek. So it'd be Boulder Ridge and Alani are the two we haven't. And so you've stayed then also at Hilton Head and at mm-hmm. Grand Californian. Correct. Yep. So what's your favorite what's resort? resort? I don't know. Shooting from the hip. Um, Animal Kingdom. Um, Animal Kingdom. Uh, Polly's not DVC. Well, Polly is DVC. DVC. And Bay Lake slash Old Key West. So you can't, you can't even name one. You have to just. You, I had top three. Top, <laughs> top, top three and a half. Yeah. I would say right now the Riviera is my favorite. Yeah. Um, then I'd have to say probably Polynesian. And then Animal Kingdom. Okay. So I have to ask, Doug, um, it's pretty rare that we have a, a Bay Lake Tower fan in the group. Make your case. <laughs> I want to know why you love it. Because I actually do too. So I, I'm, I'm interested to hear your perspective. Uh, that's our home resort. So uh, you know, yeah. it, there's a, it's, it's near and dear to us. There's a lot of, a lot of memories that come with, with Bay Lake mm-hmm. and the whole trip. You know, we talked about meeting the rep and, and, you know, we had the opportunity to do Bay Lake or, or Animal Kingdom. And actually, I actually wanted Animal Kingdom, but and we did Bay Lake. Um, it's our home resort. There's a lot of memories surrounding um, that decision and, and that weekend, that week that we that we traded, that year that we traveled down there and, and bought in. So there's a lot of that. Um, but also, um, you know, we hadn't stayed there in a while and, and uh I like the clean lines, you know, sometimes the, um, the theming, the theming you know, is, is, it's different, but at the same time, it can be kind of refreshing. Um, um, the, the uh, park view monorail view, watching the monorail go past your room never gets old ever. Um, and so that's pretty neat. Uh, the proximity to steakhouse 71, um, and, and that is, is um, that's fast becoming one of our favorite restaurants. Um, so, but uh, I guess mainly it's like I say, just it's the different theming. It's so different than than anything else. Um, you still have the location, so I think anytime location, you're staying um, in that Magic Kingdom area around that monorail loop, I think you have the opportunity just to hop over, and you can hit go to different restaurants, um, different bars, have different experiences. And it's quick to get there. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm a big fan of the monorail loop. I I know, I know Amy's team Crescent Lake for the most part, um, but 
I I like being able to hop on that monorail and just zip around, do the bar crawls and do, mm-hmm. you know, Magic Kingdom is still my favorite park. It always will be. And so I, I, I love Bay Lake Tower and I, I've only stayed there once, but it was, it was for a solid week. And I, I guess I didn't get the hate at the time. I get that dining is problematic. You gotta, you gotta hike. You gotta, you gotta want to mm-hmm. eat because there's nowhere in that building. But other it's than that, I love it. Sure, so. Well, and I, I don't hate it. I, I do not hate it. And that's where it's like, you know, again, it's like you're choosing between your children, but in, in ranking, it's like when you're booking at the seven month mark mm-hmm. and you're looking to see what else be, you know, you're not booking at your home resort, which is probably in many cases, your favorite or first choice that seven months you're looking out. It's, it's not the one that I'm looking at first to see if there's availability, but I wanted to kind of, you know, add to what Doug said is, you know, when he, the first thing that he said, when you asked him, like, you know, make your case, it's, I mean, he talked first and foremost about the feeling, you know, the nostalgia. And, and I think that that is the thing that drives everybody's choice and what they love is that they had an experience at a resort that, and they loved it. And Therefore, they are drawn to it because there is an emotional connection there that when they're there, it like it just, you know, it floods them with feel, like good feelings. And that and for me, that is the, um, you know, the Crescent Lake area. And I didn't stay. Uh, Bay Lake Tower was one of the last resorts that I stayed in. I didn't stay in it until um, you know, like March of 2021. And I've been a member since 19 no 2002 Mm -hmm. so i have like all of these years of memories at other resorts when i went to bay lake tower it kind of was just like okay i'm visiting this place and it doesn't hold a lot of memories for me so i think that that's you know and because when bay lake tower first opened it was really hard to get in there so even though I had tried many times to get in, I, I could never get in at the seven month mark because it was the only monorail DVC resort at the time. And so it was highly sought after and I, I could never get what I wanted. And therefore I didn't have time there with my kids when they were little because mm-hmm. we just could never get in. And then, you know, time went on and they opened up more resorts in that you know, um, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, and, um, you know, we had kind of, and, and I mean, and I think for me, even, you know, people feel that way about Polynesian, like that really strong connection to Polynesian. And I'm not one of those people because I never really stayed there. And I, again, the first time I stayed there was in 2021. Um, now I do feel that way about Grand Floridian, but you know, I, I've stayed there several times and um, it's just as somebody who stayed, but I, but I did stay at Grand Floridian at, in the, on the hotel side years ago. And I'm just like mm-hmm. so pleased with what they've done at that resort to make it not feel quite so floral and dark wood and kind of, you know, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I think at the end of the day, the answer, when everybody answers this question, it comes back to the feeling. Like, what feeling does this resort bring, you know, bring up for you? And it, that's why people people love a resort. So with that, I know, I know we don't like to choose between our children, but do you have one that when you're booking, you're like, okay, I guess I'll stay there. It's fine. Like, it's not my first choice. It's kind of my last choice. Like, I don't want to say least favorite, but kind of your least favorite. Saratoga. And I own there. Or we own there. We own there. <laughs> we bought we bought those, I guess, for what sleep around points is what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Saratoga. I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what it is about it. I think it's because it's so spread out. To me... Mm-hmm. Even Old Key West seems walkable. And I don't think we have found this love yet with downtown Disney. No. No. And maybe it's because our kids still are younger. I mean, we have 12, 10, Mm -hmm. and 5. 
but we just, if I can modify out of that, I will. Um, for me, I, you know, I still feel so fortunate to be able to do this, you know, and, and make this part of what our family does. So I, I have, hesitate to have a favorite or least favorite or at least least favorite. Um, to, for me, it comes to bur it comes with burnout. Um, typically when we're booking, we always have a, a top choice of three and whatever those are at whatever time we're booking, there's, it's usually always the same three mm -hmm. and uh, for a couple different trips. So it's like, um, old Key West is, you know, is, is one of those that, you know, uh, we, we try to book a trip at a certain time and, and that's what's left is old Key West. So for two or three trips in a row, that's where we stay. So then it's time to give that one a break. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where, uh, that's where, uh, this re renewed excitement for Bay Lake came up is because we hadn't stayed there in so long. Mm -hmm. Um, we were uh, just for reasons. Um, and we got a chance to stay there again and we were just like, wow, this is, we kind of forgot about this place, you know? So, um, but least favorite is, um, yeah, Saratoga, just cause there is like, as you say, there's just, there isn't much, there isn't much tied to it you know, in terms of memories and excitement and things. Um, Old Key West is is kind of high on my burnout list just because it's always available. And, and we've at times kind of burned out our stay at Old Key West because they're just, that's where we stay. Um, and Grand Floridian, I just, I, I, yeah, I've only so stayed much. there a couple times, but I, um, again, no, no, no draw, no tie. But I think for me, it's overhyped. And I just, I don't see the draw to it yet, um, except for the pizza. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just... The um, quick service pizza. I just, um, yeah, there just, there hasn't been a um, any massive memories made there. And it's just, you know... I think some of it goes down to, too, I think. It, oh, and Boardwalk. Is not, is, I don't see the draw. Oh, well, yeah, we, we disagree on that. I love the Boardwalk, but... I think it comes down don't to don't come after board. boardwalk. Amy will drive to wherever you are and toilet paper your house. <laughs> um, no, I think, like I was saying, I think it comes down to though where we've had conversations about well, are we going to go once and stay at the Grand Floridian, or are we going to go twice and stay at a, a more point econo economical resort? And so we'd rather go twice than. Yeah, because with our with our with our vacation lifestyle with little kids, you know, we're we spend a lot of time in the park. So how much time do you spend in that, you know, high point value room? Um, so that's part of the you know part of the dis discussion and decision making. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's a, that's a great point because if as as your family grows and changes, that may change, and we've talked about that mm -hmm. before in other episodes, but. You kind of have to do what you're doing at the time. And and I love the idea of, you know, yeah, we stayed there two times in a row. Let's switch it up. I found myself doing that a little bit more too. I'm like, I'm, I'm good on um, Boardwalk for a while. I'm good on Riviera for a while, even though I love those resorts. That's where I've been the last two trips in a row. So it's time to time to switch it up. But I mean, it's interesting because I, I love the Riviera, but, you know, we, We'd stay there. we stayed there a lot, you know, and when you asked me top three, it didn't even come up on my list and I kind of forgot about it. And that's, I think part of it, you know, you um, need to give those, the, the benefit of DVC and the variety as you get, you get, give them a break and come back to them. So how do you guys feel about the announcement of the uh, cabins at Fort Wilderness? I'm excited. I've always wanted to do those cabins during Halloween. Oh, those cabins. I've always okay. wanted to go there. I've always wanted to stay at the campground during Halloween. Yeah, we've talked about doing the campground cabins, um, mm -hmm. as you said. So the the DVC part would be kind of neat. It'll be, it'll, I think it'll be something we'll, we'll, we'll take a peek at if we have an opportunity. We, um, we keep talking about maybe wanting to be a camping family, but then um, we're just not. <laughs> So to have it to have the, the to, I'm from Utah and everybody here is a camping family and man I hate it so much. 
<laughs> like you're only going to be in Utah for not much longer, right? Yeah, so we we're two weeks away from moving. So yeah, I'm I'm very excited about. I, I know that, that those cabins were very ha, have been very divisive, but I mm -hmm. as soon as I read it, I was thrilled. Oh, like I'm actually for me, and and again, I think that it it you know to speak to how you know DVC kind of evolves with your needs. Speaking to what my needs are now as a woman who, you know, a single woman, divorced single mother approaching the age of 50, where I have a daughter who's about to go to college and then, a, a, you know, another daughter in high school, the way that I, I vacation at Disney is very different than the way that I used to. And mm -hmm. so I definitely seek out more like someplace like Saratoga Springs, because mm -hmm. it is a little bit more spread out, which makes it mm -hmm. quieter, more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Is right next to Disney Springs. And because, you know, I, it just gives you kind of more of like a downtown, like really like a downtown feeling. Mm -hmm. um, that's so much more appealing to me. I, I agree with you. When my kids were little, Saratoga Springs really was like, you know, because we were booking at the seven month mark, it was the only thing available. And we, and, and we kind of were alternating between Saratoga Springs and Old Key West on those trips um, just because of the points value. Whereas Saratoga Springs now, it's like, you know, my, my trips have become very kind of themed. Like I have, there's a reason for the trip and it's not to go to the parks. Whereas mm -hmm. when my kids were little, we were going to the, going to Disney to go to the parks. Now it's like, I'm going to go to Disney because I want to do the wild Africa trek and like hang out at animal kingdom lodge, or I'm going to go to Disney because I want to experience Christmas at Disney and set up a Christmas tree in my villa. So old Key West mm -hmm. makes the most sense to do that. You know, it's like, I've kind of become, I, I decide the type of trip trip I want to take and then hope that I can get the resort that best needs that trips, um, you know, intention. And therefore I see a ton of possibility at the, uh, the villas, the cabins at Fort Wilderness. I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of great plans and they're not even built yet. So. And I think we've done that too. So we also, so 2019, we started doing run Disney and we were up, I was up to three races. So there's four, it was four at the Walt Disney World and I was up to doing three of them uh, a year. Wow. Um, now I think we're down where I, we have to do two. And then he started joining me. Um, and so we last ran the princess half this last year and then we're registered for the half uh, marathon weekend because that's the one I haven't we haven't done marathon weekend yet so that also has evolved and and I found out this last time we stayed at we were at Bay Lake Tower and I love the monorail getting to the race that was a lot uh, less stress yeah so just hop on the monorail that it was waiting for the buses or we were at Old Key West trekking all the way to the front of the resort it was like added an extra <laughs> little hike onto the race um, but we also have done similar things, like you said, Amy. So we've always, since we've gone, everybody says, why do you keep going to Disney? You're going to Disney again? And I'm like, but we haven't done everything yet. Um, so, you know, we've started doing some of the tours. So we've done now all of the tours at, at, at uh, Animal Kingdom. You know, the ones we could have brought the kids on, we did. We've did. The, um, we done the Wild Africa Trek, just him and I, savoring the Savannah, just, you know, you and I. Mm -hmm. And then we brought the kids on um caring for giants and then the um, rhino excursion. So we've done different um, excursions. We've done the fishing trips. Um, we love going to Splitsville um, and we have extended family with us. So we do other things and we've bought annual passes. So now if we walk into the park and the park is super crowded, the kids will be like, well, let's just do a couple rides and then we'll just, we'll go back and we're okay with it. It's not that pressure that you've spent this money on this ticket and now you must stay there from sun up to sun down. Well, and that's a great point too. Cause, and I mean, I know I've, I've talked a lot about relocating down there, but my girlfriend and I sat down this last week and kind of planned some weekend stays. We started booking for a weekend here, a weekend there, because we're at that point that we've done every ride and every show. I don't know how many times, but we're sitting there going, you know what we've never done is we've never done a concert at Epcot at Food and Wine. And I saw the list this year and I'm like, 
-hmm. we can go to every single one of these if we want to, like we're going to be right Mm -hmm. down the road, but also some of the, the things that we haven't done, like you guys talk about run Disney. I've made the joke before that if you see me running, you should be concerned about what's following me because I, I'm not a runner. I don't run. I don't. <laughs> but one thing that is just kind of like, it's one of those Disney mystery things to me. I've never set foot at the wide world of sports. I've never been there, never driven past it. I don't even know where it is. And that's one of those things that I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta go and see like what it is. I catch a, catch a baseball game or watch a cheer competition. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. You do. That's what you should do. Is when you live there, you'll go. You should go s- see a, a spring training game there. Yeah, that'd be fun. So, what's on your Disney bucket list, you guys? What What's next? Disney bucket list. Uh, probably doing a run challenge. Yeah, we haven't done that. Uh, we've always just focused on okay. the run. It's not necessarily the miles. It's getting up mm-hmm. multiple days in a row at two thirty in the morning. That's not been appealing to us, <laughs> but I'd like to do it. I would like to see um, a behind the scenes tour. I'd like to see the steam the steam train tour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you guys speaking of tours, have you guys ever done the Keys to the Kingdom tour at Magic yeah, Kingdom? Our, yeah, we did on our honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. yeah, we honeymooned at the boardwalk. I have that's when we did it was again on our honeymoon uh, what 20 some years ago yeah um i'd do it again though. i would do it i and i i don't know what it's like now but we when we did i still remember the the guy's name the tour guide's name because he, he told us to ask for him um, and i i'm sure he's long retired by now but um <laughs> i've always wanted to go in like the um guest services and ask and ask if he's still around but um I, I wonder what it's like now with with social media. Um, I know when we did it, there wasn't even a thought. It, all of these social media things didn't even exist. Um, so everything we saw was truly behind the scenes. Yeah, you um, can look it up on YouTube. Or... And I, I and, and... So I, I did it a couple years ago. And it's pretty cool because they still want to keep you know, what's behind the scenes, behind the scenes, right? So when you're out in the, what they call on stage or the public areas, you're, you're mm-hmm. still welcome to have your phone. But when you're taking the tour and you're, you're off stage, you have a pouch, like a lanyard that you have to put your phone in. You're not allowed to mm-hmm. take it out because, because they want to keep that true to what, what it is. So, and that's why you have to be older than 16 to go, because if you're younger than that, it would ruin a lot of things for you. And, and probably <laughs> there's one spot in particular that would probably haunt your dreams if you were a child. So yeah, my, uh, my brother-in-law used to work at the magic kingdom. He was a skipper on the jungle cruise. And he said that there was a time when he was walking through the utilidor and the, and this was a time where you could smoke everywhere all the time. And there was a guy down there with like a Mickey head and a cigarette. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's that's what I was kind of, that's kind of what I was referring to was th- th- they take you past the costume room, but there's just like Disney heads hanging on the wall. It looks like Gaston's tavern on on Disney. I don't know. It it would be terrifying to a young child. So uh, what uh, what's your, you know, we like to talk about our highlight reels, right, and all the things that make mm-hmm. our Instagram and our Facebook, and we don't talk about the things that went in the dirt <laughs> very often. Yeah. Um, what, what's a, what's a Disney fail that you guys want to share? Ooh. Ooh. Well, we have had some food allergy fails. So I have celiac disease uh, and my son has an egg allergy. So our last trip, we did have two, one where I got ill and then the next day and my son got, was worse than I was, but we did, we have had that happen. Oh, that's awful. They, they took care of us. I mean, they reached out to the restaurant. The restaurant called uh, me directly. And then for the rest of the trip, uh, when we sat down at, um, at sit-down restaurants, there was somebody that always came out, even though we didn't. There was some where we ate there many times. They still came out and said, oh, no, 
we still are going to go through this step by step just to make sure that nothing happened again. For the rest. Disney failed. Um, nothing acute that I can think of. Um, but, you know, we, we talk about, when we go on trips, we talk about um, there are certain trips that were just magical because everything fell into place in terms of reservations and rooms mm -hmm. and transportation and fast passes and, and everybody got along and everybody was healthy and got out of bed on time and went to bed on time and all those wonderful things. There's been a couple of trips um, that will never be recreated because of that. Um, but in terms of Disney, so based on that and in terms of Disney fail, a lot of it comes down for me to, uh, if I say we haven't had a good trip, um, it's because of the crowds, the heat, and the lack of and the need to schedule everything all mm -hmm. the time and to not be able to freestyle it like we used to back five, oh. six, eight, ten years ago. Yeah. Um, so that's again nothing, not no one single incident that I you know we has ruined a trip or but it's um, kind of big picture. It's it's those types of things that. Um, if I say we had a, it wasn't the best trip, it's usually the heat you can't do anything about. It's Florida, mm -hmm. you know, welcome to Central Florida. Um, but it's those types of things, you know, that. Um, but I think we've, we've changed how we've, we've traveled, I think, since then. I think when we got the annual passes, I think it, a lot of that where you have to schedule everything down to mm -hmm. a T, I think we've just stopped doing that. And I think, you know, we asked our, our kids, because we're going again in, in Wow, we're going in 20 days, you know, what's the one thing you want to do, you know, or to have this one night at the Riviera and then we're meeting uh, my family at Animal Kingdom. And they said, we want to do night swimming. It wasn't, hey, we're going to see up forever. That made mom a little sad, yeah. but <laughs> we want to, we want to do night swimming. And I was like, okay, you know, that's what we'll do. But I think we've just kind of changed because we can, we don't have to run around and if it's hot we can head back to the resort well and that's you know we had some friends come stay with us this weekend and they're planning on coming down to see us in florida and they're big disney people and that's the first question they asked is with you guys living down there and having annual passes how are you even gonna how are you even gonna function because they're still in that mindset of well i've got to get my dining 60 days out and I've got a spreadsheet my entire vacation and mm -hmm. I'm with you guys. I, I've, I've long given up on that. I'm, I'm, that's one, one reason. And one reason only that universal still has so much appeal to me is you can just go, you can just go and stand in line and get on a ride and go home. And it's not this spreadsheet intensive kind of mind blowing plan. The last detail you can just go. And, and I miss that. And that's why, I don't know, I'm always a Disneyland fan and I always will be because you don't have to do that. You can just go. Now, I'm, I'm interested you know, to seeing what they're going to do. So they, they did make an announcement that they were going to be doing a change um, to the lightning lane system. I, don't, I wonder what yeah. that will be or if it will be something insignificant to what we wish it would have, could be. I don't know. A couple yeah. trips ago, um, I don't, I cannot, I, Guardians of the Galaxy is wonderful the two times I wrote it, but it's too much sensory overload for me, so I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, so I was sitting outside um, with my son eating a, a, having a Bud Light and a hot dog while these guys went on, <laughs> on Guardians, and uh, there was a, um, a young family walking, or a family with some young kids, and they're in the one kid goes, well, dad, let's, what's that, right? That's Guardian. Let's go on that. And there was another family that's like, uh, yeah, you can't just get on that. You're going to need to get a, you're going to need to get a boarding pass. And the family goes, well, what's that? So then she tried to explain it to them about going on the app and going on. And then you have to do this and do that and, and pick a time. And, and they just, they were just kind of like, well, you know, nuts to that. Um, and that's, Emily is masterful at, at planning our trips and that's why I just let her do it. Um, but it's really sad that, you know, people just can't, uh, we, we think we help, Emily helps families all the time, friends and families put, plan their trips. And it's just sad that um, people just can't get on a plane and, and walk into the park and go do stuff anymore, um, that it has to be so structured. Yeah. Um, 
that, that's my little. Well, idea. I think about like the people that that maybe aren't as Disney nerdy as most of the people in our group are. You know, they're mm-hmm. they've been doing this a long time. That's why they're DVC. They they know the value in it, and that's why they want to keep coming back. But that that couple that's coming from wherever for their first time trip and, and maybe don't want to delve into it that much. Mm-hmm. It it really does a disservice to them, especially to that that one trip ever visitor, because I, I've seen the same thing, you know, people were were wanting to ride Tron while we were there, even though it was only a soft opening and, and they were asking about it and it's five o'clock in the evening and, and that ship has already sailed for them and that was their only day at Magic Kingdom. You know, it's it's really unfortunate that they've made it so hard for the casual visitor to to just experience all that they have to offer. Mm-hmm. That being said, though, there are so many resources. I mean, like, you know, YouTube, mm-hmm. I, I like became a student of Genie Plus on YouTube when, when they were launching it. And and uh, I feel as though, I, you know, there are so many people and, you know, I think all of us kind of, as you put it, Disney nerds experience this where because we post yeah. on social media people know to reach out to people. So like, I feel like it's the rare person who shows up at Disney world and is like, wait, what? I had to buy a ticket. (laughs) You know, like I think that most people kind of are like, Oh, you know, Amy goes to Disney all the time or Jeff or, you know, Emily and Doug go all the time. Let me reach out to them and, and ask them for tips. I think where they're, where they become shocked is when you, when they ask you, do you have any tips? And then, they receive like a first bound like encyclopedia full of <laughs> information in the response. They're like, Whoa, we're, we're not expecting to get that. But uh, yeah, I think that most people like walk in with like some sense, but it is the, I think that the issue is like you become very like it's trial. It's like trial and error, you know? And so like, we all have it down because we've done it so many times but like when you walk in the first time and you're like, you, you have an idea, but you're kind of fumbling through it because you need to get accustomed to the app. Like we're all on the app every day, even when we're not on a trip, you know, these people, like the first time they go on the app is when they're planning their trip. So it's just like so much learning that has to happen as and they go. And it's like, kind of like to your point, Jeff, it's like, this is your, this is kind of like their one shot and here they are like, trying to figure it out but fortunately there are people like us out there to help people (laughs) the thing that that i get a thrill out of with with disney and i think the thing that's kind of sad is that there's because because in we vacation like this where we're you know um, boarding pass at this time to fast lightning lane at this time to lunch at that time to Mm -hmm. you know um, and we get a lot done and that's it's a wonderful way to, to see a lot of disney but there's because because of that there's so much detail in disney and i always tell people you know in terms of advice and when what should we do and i've always told people just don't take take don't forget to take at least 10 or 15 minutes to sit on a park bench and just sit and take it all in you know mm-hmm. uh we're everybody's so focused on rope drop to park close and, and and all of those things and seeing what you can in that time but there's so much to disney that it goes unnoticed uh, the the windows the windows down main street the names on the windows uh the the different colored uh, concrete down uh, liberty square mm-hmm. and all of those things that you know youtube is kind of helps to point out some of those things but that's some of the thrill that i get out of disney is, is seeing some of that and how much of that detail that you know what you don't really recognize is mm-hmm. there, but if it wasn't there, you would notice. Um, yeah. And then, so I always tell people, you know, don't forget to take at least take 10 minutes and just sit on a bench and just people watch and just take it all in. And, 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 um, cause this is going to be a once in a lifetime op- for some, it's going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. So don't forget to mm-hmm. just take that in. Well, and that's the other thing too, is managing expectations, you know, Disneyland, if you're doing three days, you can see pretty much everything. If you go five days, you can absolutely see everything. Mm-hmm. Disney World, you can go twenty times and still not see everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there was. I mean, the last time we were down there was the first time you and I rode 
pirates in many trips because we just didn't do it, <laughs> you know. Oh, and I still haven't ridden the Astro Orbiter. I'm going to Disney World 20 years, and I've yeah. still never done it. It was a one and done for me. I hate to say. I'm sure it will be for me too, but it's kind of like that that thing that's still on my. I didn't, I didn't think it would be so polarizing. I mean, I don't get sick from Guardians. I don't get sick mm-hmm. from Avatar, Soren. That. That did it for me. Yeah. Hmm. Well, is there anything else you wanted to uh, share before we wrap this up? I think be kind to the cast members. They're working their <sighs> butts off. Yeah, I Agreed. think that's one thing that hasn't gone lost on us. I think, especially through COVID, we've been traveling down there more frequently now, probably since the, the last 10 mm-hmm. years. We've gotten to know cast members. We've made friends, um, people that we seek out, um, people that we'll connect with that when they're not working. Um, and I think we really got to learn from them what makes their day and, and just thanking them for their hard work. Sometimes they're there for 12, 14 hours. Yeah. And heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've, it's, it's been interesting to get to know a couple cast members and, and, you know, uh, most recently there's been some changes at Disney and, and cast members are affected by that in terms of, of, um, income and things like that. So, um, be thankful of them. You know, they, there's a certain magic behind all of that, that, that they are able mm-hmm. to do what they do to the level that they do it in. It takes a certain kind of people to do that. Um, you know, bar none, DVC was the best decision I've ever made for my family. Absolutely hands down. And I tell everybody that all the time, uh, you know, you make decisions as a parent, as a, as an adult, as a child, and all of those things, but and, and you always kind of wonder if I should have bought that car, or if I should have bought a cheaper one. But uh, you know, DVC hands down is the best decision I've ever made for my family. And they always say, you know, you wish you would have bought more points. Yeah, sure, I, I do. That's um, only other advice I guess we have. Always buy twenty five percent more points than, than you, think. you think you need. <laughs> so, and you know, I always tell people to part of the thrill I get out of Disney is is the, um, I mean, there's there's a there's a magic to it in terms of, of the business side of it. And I know it's a corporation and it's a business, but there are a multitude of books out there that I've read about the history of Disney and Imagineers and things. And so I would encourage people to pick up a couple of those and, and read them. It, it, as an adult, um, even if you might not be a Disney fan and your, your wife and your kids want to go and you just are tagging along, I think sometimes if you read a couple of those books, it, it gives you a different perspective about what was created there and, and why and the mindset and the fact that it was able to be done mm-hmm. um, and to be successful at, and maintain this level that, that it, it has been to this point. So, you know, that's another another piece of the whole Disney pie that, that uh, is there for people to explore some of these books that are out there and things. I would encourage people to do that. So, Very cool. Amy, did you have anything else you wanted to, to say? <laughs> Just once again to thank you guys for taking time out of your day and for spending some time to talk to us about Disney and DVC. Thank you. This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for being such a, a great part of our group. I love to see your posts. And when's your next trip? 20 days. 20 days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have a, uh, I haven't done it in a while, although we just did it here for this last trip is, is uh, many days before the trip. We'll create a hundred days to Disney chain. Yep. Um, and I take some strips of paper, you know, construction paper, cut them into strips and then link them like you did when you were a kid. Um, yeah. and we'll make a hundred, a hundred links mm-hmm. and then put, uh, um, inside each link, Emily will write some random free Mickey ice cream bar, or free pin or, or free popcorn. And each day the kids get to pull one off randomly and, and sometimes they have, coupons in them sometimes they don't but it's good that's a fun way to do it. i think we're down to what 20 some you said 20 some days so um mm-hmm. yeah they've they've gotten a thrill out of doing that so that's awesome i love that well thanks everybody for t- tuning in and uh, don't forget to hit that like button subscribe follow us on facebook instagram and tiktok and until next time we'll dvc you real soon bye everyone bye.